So, yeah, all right, yeah. but anyway, our, our guest is on the line. So we don't right. have to talk any more uh, fast and the furious. But, you know, what? I do want to get this person's opinion on the whole uh, 24 hours in a theater thing. But anyway, <laughs> here she is making her Totally Driven Radio debut, Emmy-nominated actress, New York Times bestseller. You might have seen her on one of my all-time favorite shows, General Hospital, True Blood, Cougar Town, Revenge, countless others. Here is the one, the only, Miss Carolyn Hennessy. Carolyn, how are you doing tonight? I'm I'm fabulous. What did I hear? Uh, 24 hours in the theater? Oh, my goodness, yeah. that sounds like my childhood. What, 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 <laughs> what, 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 what's happening? What's going on? What did the I next miss? Mar- <laughs> the next Marvel <laughs> Avengers movie coming out, they're going to show oh, you, you have the option yeah. to go to yeah. the theater the day before <laughs> and sit through uh-huh. 24 hours of all the Marvel movies and then see the new Avengers movie. Would you be able to sit in a theater? For- <laughs> Listen, you put a you put a bucket of popcorn big enough in front of me, and I can sit anywhere for any length of time. I will cross the Atlantic <laughs> with a bucket of movie popcorn. Uh, yes, ab- oh, absolutely. I I could. I think that would be really fun. That would be just a, just a whole pile of fun. Yes. Yeah, so I'm I'm I, I vote yes for that proposition. You, it's really. I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. Are you kidding? Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Listen, and uh, and th- you know, throw some Robert Downey Jr. Just sprinkle him, sprinkle him literally <laughs> throughout, throughout the throughout, and and I'm I'm yours. I'm I'm all yours. Sure, of course. <laughs> Just a sprinkle. And I was right? I was actually I was actually yeah sprinkle sprinkle Robert Downey Jr. Um, I was talking with a friend of mine today at lunch, and uh, he's a big, big into, co- into the comic books. He was telling me the story of the what the Scarlet Witch and uh, and uh, Silver Flash Spur Quick, Quicksilver Ring. Silver Surfer. Quick, oh yes, 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 that too. Quicksilver. Um, yes, he was telling me, telling me, telling me all you know the stories of where these are you know the the, the origin, and I was fascinated. And this is going to be one hell of a movie. Yep. This Just is a, like the. This whole giant movement going on, you got to get on that bus. Okay. Would you? And do, would, do you need us to drop you anywhere? <laughs> as long as it's not at the twenty-four because, hour theater, I'm good. Because you're obviously not staying on the bus with us. So where can we drop you? Do we, I mean, like you know, maybe a you know, like you want a massage, maybe a, a KFC. Is there something? What, what do you want? What do you want to do? Yeah, well, here, speaking of food and a massage, it's funny. Uh, on Seinfeld earlier tonight was the episode where George uh, was combining food and sex, and my daughter turns to me and says, "Daddy, is that you?" <laughs> I was just like, "Ah, uh. I didn't even know what to say." <laughs> oh, busted! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if I had a nickel, anyway, uh, how y- how y'all doing? <laughs> We're doing great. I, and I'm so excited by this. You know, and seriously, like when I said earlier, I, I, I grew up, I was watching General Hospital since I was five years old, and I've actually stopped the last few years. I actually turned 45 in a couple of weeks, but the last few years I dropped off the General, uh, the general Hospital uh, kick. Now, wh- why is that? Uh, why is that? Uh, you know, it's just because of work, because I, I used to okay. have it where my schedule was good, where I could watch it, right. and now it's, you know, I'm working at that point, and I'm just doing so much. I don't have time to watch it, and I, I really should be. It, it sucks. Uh, yes, the fact that you yeah. are not able to watch General Hospital sucks. General Hospital itself, uh, from what I understand, does not suck at this point. Um, uh, I wouldn't know. It's been it's been it's been months since I've been on it, and you know the fans apparently they talk about Diana a lot. She's upstairs <laughs> in another room preparing a brief, or she's you know, but uh, but no no one and you know. Ron Carlavati doesn't have the temerity to bring me back on. I don't know why. I'm a delight to work with. So I, I have no idea whose dog I kick. Um, but uh, <laughs> but it's, it's interesting because Di- Diane's she's moving in and about Port Charles, but she's not there. So it's huh. very strange for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's, I don't well, know. that's how you came on my radar was was through General Hospital. And the one thing I right. always said every time I saw you, and I gotta know if you if people ask you this or compare you, do you do you get compared to Sharon Osbourne a lot? Oh my God, so much, so much. And then I open my mouth and they go, Oh yeah, I guess it's not you. It's like no, 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 it's not me. <laughs> first of all, I 
first of all, I'm not I'm not married to a uh, you know a genius psychopath. Um, well, I was uh, minus the genius part, but um, but uh, but no, and I but I, I I also don't have that fabulous accent, and I don't have that much money. Uh, and so there, and and our our hair our hair shades are just slightly different colors. But uh, yeah. listen, it's a kick. She's beautiful. She's a beautiful lady, and I love getting Sharon Osborne. I got my first. Uh, let's see, I, I I also get Marish to hard to pay a great deal in the, you know, the short haired. Uh, right. Uh, trying, you know, SVU, SUV, SVU, uh, uh, the days. <laughs> um, uh, what else did I get the other day? It was so funny. I, I it, oh 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 I got Faye Dunaway playing Joan Crawford. That's what I got, which I thought was hilarious. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different and I, one. I think I, th- I think they were just talking about my personality, actually, in that one. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did you say when they said that to you? I said thank you, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you say? It's like okay. <sighs> you know, I mean, you can't you can't really argue with someone and say, well, that's just rude, or well, that's you know, you know. People, people, people see all sorts of things, and you just sort of have to kind of smile and say, "Cool, bye bye." Actually, the fellow who said this to me, we, I just, I just finished working on a movie in Des Moines, in Iowa, okay. and the fellow, the fellow who said it to me, he was so excited because he finally figured out who I reminded him of, and uh, and and he really meant it as a compliment, because let's face it, in their in their heydays, uh, uh, you know, Joan Crawford and. Say done away. We're both stunners. So I, I just, I decided to take it as a compliment and combine the two. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Take it and smile. That's it. That's what you have to That's do. Because, because to be honest with you, most people would, would, would just wither if they ever thought that they were being mean. They just, you know, some of them just don't necessarily know any better, know exactly how to phrase it so that it's really a nice thing to say. It's like, <laughs> Hmm. You don't look half so heavy on television, you know. In in real life, it's like, okay, thank you, thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you just smile, no. just smile. Listen, attention. Listen, it's it's all lovely, and people, I think, for the most part, really mean to be lovely. So, for the most part, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, as as I was going through and doing some research on you, I was kind of mm-hmm. shocked because, like. Uh, <laughs> You, you had this, like, incredible training, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the American Conservatory Theater, Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. And yeah. then, then it's like you end up going to the Acme Comedy Theater. It's like, hey, what, what, that's what, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, Acme Comedy Theater voted best best comedy troupe in Los Angeles in 19, oh, I don't know, 91, 92, I can't remember. Uh, we even we even sort of surpassed the groundlings uh, at, at that point for, uh, for, for a little bit. Um, astonishing. Yes, I went I went all through the Groundlings, which is the sort of the zenith of comedy, uh, okay. certainly here on the West Coast, or it was at that time. Now we've got Improv Olympics and uh, Upright Citizens Brigade. All of these all of these places that are teaching improv and sketch comedy. I went through the Groundlings and then I went right in onto the main stage of the of Acme Comedy Theater, and it was amazing. Alex Borstein came out of that. Um, so many faces, uh, Jamie Kaler, so many faces that you would recognize on television uh, came oh. out of the Acme, Acme Comedy main stage. Oh, my gosh, some of the funniest things you've ever seen in your life went on under the direction of M.D. Sweeney over there on La Brea Boulevard. So pretty, wow. pretty good. Yeah. Now, yeah. When, you got into, uh, when you got into acting, it, did you want to get into comedy as well? Was that one of your no, like, no, passions? I was going no? To be, no, I was, no, oh, no, I was going to be the next Meryl Streep. She, she actually hadn't actually gone anywhere, nor has she gone anywhere now, but I was going to be the next one. And, uh, <laughs> and so I was I, you're very serious. Oh, incredibly serious. Thespian. Um, drama, 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 all up, up one side and down the other. And then I happened to be in school one time, and one of my professors, <laughs> she uh, pointed me out to the rest of the class as a classic example. She said, you are the perfect example of the grotesque. And I went, what? 
and and I was devastated. I had no idea. This was a very very well educated woman, but someone who perhaps not should have, should not have been teaching young minds. But I went home. I looked at the word grotesque, and I was floored. I was I was just heartbroken. And I went back to her yesterday, the next day, and I said. How could you? How would you? Why would you? And she went, oh, no, 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 you don't understand. Let me tell you my meaning. I said, yes, yes, hand me the brochure that goes along with the sentence that you said to me so that I don't, you know, lose my mind. And she said, think of Phyllis Diller, Lucille Ball, Milton Berle, Don Rickles, uh, Eve Arden, these women, these men and women in terms of comedy that are willing to go to the mat. They will do anything for, quote, unquote, the funny. Um, and that's what I do. They will, you know, people who are not afraid to look funny, ugly, distorted, uh, less, less than perfect. So you, you sort of came out of your, the era of the Myrna Loy and the Carol Lombard, and then you sort of slid into the era of Lucille Ball, who is the, you know, I I would never compare myself to Lucio Ball, but there are those who have, and thank you very much. At any rate, um, it's the people who decided that you know clownishness and and the pratfalls and the big that was um, that was that was me, and that's when I said, oh my goodness, I might make a living being able to make people laugh, and once I started that. I've never looked at it's you know that's that's oxygen to me that's oxygen so wow so but I you know I, I started out very serious yes you are yes you are you are a perfect example of the grotesque oh <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> well that's that is the nicest way I've heard grotesque explained though so that's a positive exactly exactly it's true it's true it's like no no I mean this by grotesque it's like oh all right so you don't mean Quasimodo okay. <laughs> so yeah. what made you want to become an actress like was there like a defining moment that you said like <clears throat> that's it that's this is well, what i want to do it, yeah yeah if if anyone could be said to to really sort of retain their memories from the age of four i uh that's me and my father my father was a production designer my father was an academy award-winning production designer and i always oh, wow. say that i'm the only person i'm the only person i personally know who has rehearsed their Academy Award speech, holding an Oscar? Um, seriously, because he uh, he designed Fantastic Voyage, and that won the Academy Award for Best Art Direction in 1966. And so I walked onto those sets as a very 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 young child, and said, "I don't." I I just remember there being a pinpoint of light over across this huge, dark, cavernous room, and, and lots of people were milling about. It was like a beehive over there. And I didn't know what was going on, but I said, I don't know, whatever it is, I want, to, I, I want in. I want in. And so I spent the next many, many years being a studio brat and, you know, seeing my father working on Logan's Run and Young Frankenstein and King Kong and Dirty Harry. At, at the, I mean, he was responsible for the look of all of these films. And I wow. went to visit him a great deal. And I knew that whatever happened on a studio soundstage, I was going to be a part of. It just so happened. <laughs> Luckily for me, I have, a, I, have a bit of an, I have a bit of a skill in that area. So I, I, got, I got very lucky. But I would, you know, I'd be hanging from the rafters if I wasn't in front of the camera. I'd be behind the camera some way. So, yeah, it, yeah when I was four, basically when I was four, I, I, I caught the bug. So was he uh, supportive of your decision to go with that common actress? He was. He was indeed. Um, he died when I was 19, and I would, I, oh, it would always be so interesting for me to see what twists and turns my career might have taken had he lived. But I'll tell you this. He instilled in me literally from day one when he realized that, you know, aside from my brief but tragic flirtation with gymnastics, uh, uh, that I was there was no there was no turning me away. Um, he made sure that I knew very very early that I am no better than no better no worse than anybody on that soundstage. In other in other words, respect the crew, every crew that you that, that you work on, and 
the the era of arrogance and diva and bringing your ego in through the elephant doors is 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 that was that was done as far as he was concerned because he'd worked with the best and he'd worked with the worst and he made me understand that the people who support the movie are the most important people on the film or the soundstage or on the right. television set yeah and and that's and so you know and what's interesting is that then growing up as in my early 20s and 30s when people found out that I was Dale Hennessy's daughter because everyone loved my father. Pe- they, people could not do enough for me. But it wasn't, they, it wasn't in terms of getting me a job as an actress. It was, do you need lumber? Do you need a paint? Do you need paint? Do you, what, can, right. what can we as the crew, you know, what can we, what can we do for you? <laughs> you know? so, do you need, do you need wow. some apple boxes? What? What do you need? So, yeah, and so I saw, so as, to this day, when I, whenever I teach, I say, any member of any crew is smarter than any ten actors in a room on any day. They will work harder than you do in a year. Uh, they'll, they'll work harder in a day than you will in a year. And they're, they're, just, they're just better people, so... So play nice, play nice, and, play nice in their sandbox. You know, you mentioned yeah. the word respect quite a few times uh, right there, and it was actually something I actually had written down too, like soap operas. So soap opera actors or actresses, they they don't seem to get the respect as say a movie actor or actress or uh, prime time. Um, did yeah. you like? gain a new respect for them as you were doing it? Well, I I don't think I ever didn't have respect for soap actors, uh, so, so, so actors and actresses. Um, the outside individual and, you know, maybe Hollywood in general, but you will find you will find some of the best acting on soap operas. You'll also find some of the worst. You will clearly right. find some of the worst, but you'll find some of the best. And you will find some of the hardest working people. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it kind of it sort of runs the gamut. And then you'll find actors and actresses that simply do not give two, you know, two right. hoots. Hoots you is can a say good it. word. Two hoots. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Two shit. They, they just, they just, they just, they, they just, they just couldn't hear less. Um, and they kind of come at their jobs in a very sort of lackadaisical fashion. And they go, uh huh. And it makes, every, it makes everybody else's job harder. Um, wow. I realized very early on that my job on any set is to make everybody else's job easier. Wow. I got this. I got. I, I got this acting thing. I, I. 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 I'm. I'm. I'm really kind of rock solid with that. So my job is to make everybody else's job easier. And boy, on a soap opera, when you're doing 180, 182 pages, 170 pages a day, and wow. you you do not have time for the diva. Everybody just rolls their eyes and bites their tongues and and tries to move on as best they can, but then you know then then you have the people that are spot on, letter perfect most of the time, show up, do the work and and make everybody else's job easier. So yeah, in terms of respect, in terms of acting, because there it's it's a whole different animal. You have to you have to use garbage memory, and you put it in the night before or sometimes when you're sitting in the makeup chair running lines drilling 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 with your scene partner if they if if you know unfortunately like uh nancy lee gron and maurice bernard they are so willing to work and run those lines back and forth back and forth back and forth before we go up and shoot but then you have to get rid of it immediately after you've shot it because sometimes the next day you've got another mm, 20 pages to work so it's fine it's gone. And fans are so, fans are adorable. I love them. And I have the smartest and the best. And they'll come up to me and they'll say, do you remember what you said to Sonny last Christmas? And I was like, honey, I, I don't. <laughs> but but I know you do. And so you, you tell me, just clue me in, clue me in. You know, they're, 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 they're very funny. It's interesting also because when it comes to respecting actors off Screen, I think that soap opera fans, they love their soap opera actors. I don't know if they have the respect for them that they do for primetime or, or cinematic actors because we are more than actors to them. We are family. We're right. family. And they feel that it's okay to tell us what they like, what they don't like, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and 
five percent of it we have no control over. So it's like, oh, really? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't know why Diane said that. Talk to the writer. <laughs> Uh, too funny. You know, actually, too, like, I was sitting there today, I was going through beloved YouTube and pulling up clips of you from different shows and all, and I'm going through, uh, like, some general hospital clips, and I come across uh, you and Alexis playing pool with Coleman, uh, and uh, I, yeah. I sent it over to my co-host, Nick, I said, oh, my God, yes. I, I never would have expected this from her. She looked amazing. Well, please, they had me cinched up five ways on Sunday in a in a in a rig in a rig that you just know could never have gone under whatever dress or suit you know Diane was wearing five minutes earlier. They just but they said I said if we're gonna do it if we're gonna play strip pool then let's go for it, ladies. And they just you know the costume department just loved me. Yeah, I know, I know, and it's funny because I actually do shoot pool. <laughs> Which is good, but I, but I, but I do, but I do not do it in uh, dominatrix s lingerie, uh, or I don't do it, you know, most of the time wearing that kind of thing. Well, so. I, I guess your character on Cougar Town would be playing pool the same way, though. She'd be playing pool but naked, please, please. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she'd be, she'd be, she'd be on some sort of, on some sort of, you know, throne, directing her little boys as to which shots to make. You know, she would. Un- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Barb. Was like, um, Barb is pretty funny. Barb is funny. What was it like working with uh, Courtney Cox? She's lovely. She's very. She's really lovely. She's a little flip of a thing, and she was also the one of the executive producers. So she had a lot on her plate and a lot on wow. her mind, and um, she. But so she was. She was kind of. She was. She was intense, and she was really focusing on. You know, especially that first year, making that show an absolute success. But she was always lovely to me, just really, really sweet. Always a smile, yeah, and nice. funny, and funny, and very self-deprecating, and really, really able to laugh at herself. And you know, for a woman that beautiful to be able to laugh at themselves, they don't really have much to laugh at, but it's nice when they do. <laughs> <laughs> now, how about True Blood? When you got on True Blood, I, when you were coming in, I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. How about that trip, Brian, huh? How about <laughs> it? Um, yeah, that uh, probably to date in terms of length of time and what I was able to do, that was it's probably my best experience. Maybe revenge, maybe revenge. Um, but just in terms of experience total, because uh, let's not forget the Vampire Authority was underneath the city of New Orleans. I mean, we were right. you know underneath a power plant in New Orleans. And we had these, this is such a lovely, you know, set, and it was very sumptuous and stark. So while everybody else, like Sookie and Eric and Bill and you name it, they were all running butt naked through the woods, you know, at midnight, filming, or whatever they were doing, we were, you know, nine to five vampires, um, very well taken care of. We didn't have to freeze. Nobody was, you know, that was all the second unit. And uh, and then one for one forty eight hour stretch, we were in New Orleans, walking down Bourbon Street, corner of Bourbon and St. Peter, and uh, and that was a time. Let me tell you, boys. Let me tell you, <laughs> that was that was kind of amazing. But but we were so pampered, pampered on that show, and uh, I remember just feeling so excited when I would get to, when I would on a day off, I'd be called into the studio so that the wardrobe mistress would check to make sure that the necklace that she picked out really sort of went well with the It's like, oh, my gosh, the budget, the care that was taken was just amazing. Yeah, and great, wow. great, great people. I remember towards the end of it, about, uh, you know, about halfway through, um, Alexander Skarsgård realized that my character wasn't going anywhere, and so he could sort of warm up to me because, you know, when you're that, famous, you're that big a superstar, and you're in the number one HBO show, right. you, you can't walk, he, he, couldn't, he, can't, he couldn't walk down the street, so yeah. he was, you know, and, and he had so many people coming up to him, even on the set, these actors and actresses, and, and, and they, he didn't know if they were staying, if they were a guest star, if they were a, a, a background, if they were staying for the duration. So when he realized that I wasn't going anywhere, I remember one day I walked and it's like, hello, Alexander. And he just threw his arms around me and I went, 
Every woman in the world wants to be where I am right now. <laughs> so funny because because he is just as handsome, just as handsome. It's yeah, it doesn't get any more handsome. He, both he and uh, and Stephen Moyer, oh, they the handsomeness. <laughs> Them lovely, lovely, lovely people. I, I have to people. ask, or my wife will kick my ass. Her 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 big Hollywood crush, Christopher Maloney. Who you got to work with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was he? Yeah, um, it, he was it, it, again delightful. Um, very, very intense because you know he was playing vampire Roman, very, very, very intense. But I'll tell you because the series is is you know is over, and I then got blowed up. Um, <laughs> that I gave my character Rosalind. Uh, a very, very small and simple secret, and that was, you know, in vampires, they'll just, they'll just hump anything. I mean, each other, humans, you name it, and, and they'd lived so long that they just had sex with any and everything. But I gave my character, Rosalind Harris, the secret that she was desperately in love with Christopher Maloney's character. <laughs> and it, it and and it was love that was not returned, nor it nor had it ever nothing had ever been consummated. And so she was, so she was just she's just brimming over with, with love and lust for him, and he absolutely does not return it. And so it, it just it sort of breaks her heart. It makes her very very vulnerable, which is fun. But he was lovely. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So so in those scenes, you you see me looking at Christopher Maloney, and it's like. Ah! I just want to gobble you up, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, now you were only uh, only on one episode of Anger Management, but Charlie. Sheen, yeah. I mean, <laughs> any craziness for Charlie? Not only, uh, it, it, it's <laughs> not, not not only no craziness, and 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 um. The, the, the coin's still up in the air as to whether or not I would actually tell you if there were, but I probably would because he's so out there. Um, but to be perfectly honest with you, a more gallant gentleman, I it's it's you you couldn't find. And you talk you talk about self deprecating. He's the first one, the first one, and generous on the set and came up and shook my hand, which is really the mark of not, not just somebody who's a, who's, uh, who's, who's, a, who's a good actor. In fact, it isn't necessarily the mark of a good actor. It's the mark of somebody who's a good person. Charlie Sheen has his problems. Yeah, he's got his, his issues and his demons, but he was delightful to me, really lovely to me. And, uh, you know, he's, and, and i got to tell you something, he's a handsome dude. And I wish you, if for no other reason, aside from slaughtering massive brain cells every time he lights up or takes a drink, he, Charlie Sheen is going to lose his look. And he, I got to tell you something, he's a handsome dude, handsome guy. And I, and I, so I personally would like him to stop so he, he, you know, beats back the ravages of time. So, so there you go. Charlie Sheen, wow. Yeah. Now, out of uh, some some of these characters we just talked about, like Diane on General Hospital or Barb on Cougar mm-hmm. Town, right. Rosalind on True Blood, which mm-hmm. was your favorite character? Oh man, you know, oh man, it, it's interesting. Uh, people, oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> with, because because it's interesting because with every character I do, I have to add it to the list. Um, Diane, they allowed me to help create Diane. So she, because she was only supposed to be two two days of work, two episodes of Sunny and Spinella. Oh, wow. That's it, two episodes. So they allowed me to help create her. So she holds a tremendous place in my heart. And I know Diane, like the back of my, you know, I mean, she's, that's, I know all of them. Barb, how delicious is it to get to run in and drop little, you know, atomic bombs and watch them go off and then run away laughing. I would say probably, probably my favorite to date might be Penelope Ellis on Revenge. Wow. That okay. that that would probably it would probably be Penelope Ellis. Diane Diane is just so ah uh, uh, me. 
Penelope, Penelope is so evil and so mean and so, I hope, antithetical to everything that I am that, it, that, that she was so much fun to play. You know, she was just so much fun to play. Well, I know so. my co-host Nick is a huge fan of Revenge and you on the show. Well, thanks, Nick. <laughs> no, absolutely, and I'm so glad you said that about the character because it it was this year it was one of the best characters to watch, and the way the storyline was going, I'm I'm secretly holding out hope for a return. So, <laughs> well, you and you and me both, and uh, you and me both, yeah, yeah. I, listen, I think there should be a spinoff because if anybody needs to get revenge now, it's it's Penelope on Nolan. Because he just he he shattered everything. What? Are you kidding me? I I, I mean everything tur- turned upside down. I think Penelope should put a hit out on Nolan, but that's just me. So you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 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 helping. You know what? You you make a good point because I I would totally I could totally picture a spinoff with Louise and her mom and Nolan and just the whole. Bring it down south and just make it sort of beautiful and epic like Revenge. That would be so great. Uh huh. <laughs> I think so. Well, the, the revenge, the revenge rap party is Saturday night, and I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be talking to some producers. You bet I am. I'm gonna tell the thing. Look, look, look. Let's just set it in the south. We can film it in New Orleans. Set it in the south. Oh my goodness! Happy days are here again. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, Too funny. Yeah. Well, something else you have in common with Nick, too, is which I had no idea of this. You're a, an author. I mean, you, you have a bunch of children's books out. The whole, you have a whole series, Pandora. You have a New York yeah. Times bestseller. Uh, yeah. yeah. When, yeah. when did well, you decide to become an author? Um, when I, oh, in my spare time. Um, <clears throat> about, about 11 years ago, I was in a writing workshop just sort of diddling around, really, really uh, very much a, a dilettante, just not, not producing much and was writing a series of short stories on young women, on uh, misunderstood women in fiction. And a visiting author heard me reading one particular short story based on Pandora and said, no, that doesn't need to be a short story. That can be a novel. And I went, in my foolishness, I said, oh, let's make a series of novels, not realizing what I was doing to myself. And, uh, and then, you know, 10 years later, I had got seven books on the shelf. And it's, I, it is the work, to be honest with you of which I am most proud because they it is a fabulous, fun, funny, um, lesson learning, lesson teaching uh, series, and it's a retelling of the classical Greek myth. And uh, the best review I heard of it was Harry Potter meets Edith Hamilton. And so because what my girls go through, holy mackerel. So it's, it's basically ages 8 to 13, but I, I like to say 8 and up. So, yeah, I have I – have, that on the, those on the shelves, and then uh, the uh, the producers of of General Hospital, knowing that I was a published author, asked me to write uh, a book all, from the point of view of one particular character in General Hospital, and that's Damien Spinelli. And so I did. It's called The Secret Life of Damien Spinelli, and it debuted at number ten on the New York Times bestseller list. So I. Uh, you know, listen. As I say, gen, general the general hospital fans, they're smart. They're smart. They're smart. So I get to, I get to chisel New York Times bestseller on my tombstone. And if you ever, you know, trust me, I never thought I'd be able to say that. <laughs> so that's, yeah, so that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, when I saw about the the book of Spinelli, I was like, wow. I was like, did they like come to you? I was thinking to myself, did they come to you, or did you like go to them with that idea? Or no, no, they they came to me. Bob Guza actually came to me one day and said, "We'd like you to write a book." And I went, "Huh? <laughs> what?" So <laughs> I went, "Oh, okay, Bob, do that." And uh, and I and I laid it out, and he, you know, Bob Guza, who was the writer on that show for so many years, the head writer, he was really the steward of those characters, and I had to run a lot past him, but The Secret Life of Damien Smelly is more fun than anything, and I was able to take such liberty and such license, and in some ways, there was a wonderful um, character, um, uh, Connie, no, oh my gosh, 
and you, I, I don't know if you've got if you've got listeners listening in or people in the chat room. It's like I can't even remember who ran Couture uh, um, the magazine. Anyway, the woman that uh, the woman sure. that I idolized, my character. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Connie. Um, no, not oh well, anyway. Uh, this is this is this is me now blanking on one of the great characters in the book. And and anyway, played by Megan Ward. Anyway, and all of your listeners will know. I just happen to be going through a, a moment right here. Um, <laughs> this this incredible sort of um, Anna Wintour, Devil Wears Prada woman who they Kate they Howard. gave Megan. Kate, thank you, thank you, Kate Howard. Good heavens, uh, and. And Megan Ward was really, um, she was so lovely in that character. And they uh, they took her off the show. They sort of recast her after about a year. And and I thought it was terribly unfortunate. But she and I were talking one day, and Megan is a dear friend and a lovely actress and a lovely woman. And she just said, you know, I think it's, I think it's very, very sad. And I said, I'm going to do something for you. Because I was right in the middle of writing the book. So I think one of my favorite chapters, is the Kate Howard chapter, and uh, and I will not spoil it for your readers, but uh, it was able and and I I talked with Megan after the book came out, and she just called me up and she said, "What a great tribute to Kate Howard." And I went, "Yeah, well, yeah, that's you know, that's the power of the pen, man. The power of the pen." It was, and I was and it was really lovely to be able to do it. So, did it, now if you you wrote that had the success with it, did they come to you like to maybe do more or to help write? Uh, <laughs> To do the shows? I know. To do the shows? No, no. And I thought, well, why not? I could, I, heck, I could do this. Um, no, they did promote it a lot on the show, as if, as if, but, but they sort of twisted it in so that um, Spinelli and Diane were writing it together, and so on and so forth. They actually, uh, it's interesting because Disney Hyperion said. No, we're going to make it seem as if Diane Miller has written this book. And I said, absolutely not. Diane Miller does not exist. She exists, you know, uh, but Carolyn Hennessy wrote this book. So it's, you know, the, the battle for the title was, was hard, hard fought. So, because, because, because usually, because very often they will have, I think it's like Robin's Diaries or some, when they have a book about a soap opera, they have somebody right. else write it. And it's like, okay. yeah, but guess what? Guess what? I'm, I am, no, 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 nobody goes through this book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one, one other throw I, I forgot to show out there. Another uh, one of my uh, co-hosts, Nick's favorites, was uh, Dawson Creek. Oh yeah, the fabulous, the lo- the love to hater of Mrs. Valentine. Yeah, the manager, the manager of the Yaka, Drew's mother. Um. Uh. Yeah. I, that was that was a that was a time. That was a wonderful, wonderful time. I had a great time flying to Wilmington. Um. You know, every two or three weeks, staying in this grand, you know, grand hotel, and then having you know a week of work, a day on either side, and then and then three days to do nothing but roam around Wilmington and take pottery classes and. Just, I mean, you know, it was that was that was wonderful. It was a great, great time, great time. Yeah, yeah. There you go, Nick. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you you were like, but nonstop busy. I, I mean, not, not only between the acting and the books, but you also do an online show um, called Animal Magnetism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um about let's see. Oh gosh, I'd say about. Ooh, eight years ago, nine years ago now, um, a uh, a fan of General Hospital contacted me because I had I had uh, in response to a video that had been posted on my Twitter feed, which said, you know, boycott Ringling Brothers, Ringling Brothers, bad, bad, bad. They treat elephants bad. And I went and I said, and I saw the video and I said, oh yes, they treat elephants badly. Boycott Ringling Brothers. And this. Wonderful man who uh, I call the Alpha and the Omega uh, in the animal world, Dr. Gray Stafford, who runs the Wildlife World Zoo in Phoenix, right, in Litchfield Park right outside of Phoenix. He contacted me. He and his, he and his wife happened to be huge General Hospital fans, and he said, five minutes Tennessee, from thank- there. What? I'm five minutes from there. 
then go go okay, then you need to go and talk to Gray. In fact, we'll we'll talk about you talking to Gray in a minute. But Gray said he goes, Thank you so much, Miss Hennessy, for your for your concern about animals. Um, you should know this about Ringling Brothers and that, that, that video is many years old and yes they do do this, but they also do this uh in, in the positive arena. And I went, Oh my God, really? I I spoke without knowing the facts. I, I and so I retracted and I and then he and I started the, the dialogue and I said if I'm going to speak on behalf of anything, I'm going to know as much as I possibly can about it and that led off into the, the third one of the you know, a, a third major direction in my life, which is animal advocacy. And under his tutelage I have learned I, I can't even tell you what I've learned and why jumping on the bandwagon in terms of, you know, destroying zoos and letting animals loose and blah, 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 is absolutely the wrong way to go and that we are in such dire need now of positive reinforcement training everywhere, uh, you know, positive, you know, uh, modern zoos and aquariums because we have done so much to this planet to destroy it and we now, unfortunately, we have destroyed so many species, and now we are their last best hope because there are no more wild spaces. But it's in, it was in, it's in talking with Bray and realizing why people who people who take something like blackfish at its word and have not done their research um, are the ones that truly need to be educated. Because I now have a uh, on my radio show because I went to Thailand, I went to Cambodia, I went to Florida, I went down to Litchfield Park, I. Gray is one of my dear, nearest and dearest friends now, and I've, on my time and dime, I have flown all over, and I've learned and learned and learned, and I came back from Thailand and Cambodia very depressed because I was working on a documentary called Elephant in the Room with some great, great marine mammal and terrestrial mammal trainers, and hopefully that documentary is going to be released soon, but I came back depressed. You know, once you travel out and you see the way animals are treated, uh, not outside your city, outside your state, outside your country, you your heart breaks and you but you but you gain a perspective. And I knew I had to come back and do something and spread the word and get the word out about people who are doing it wrong and people who are doing it right. And so, yeah, I've got uh, animal magnetism on www.ubnradio.com. Uh, every other Sunday, 7 o'clock, listen in. We are in the middle of my salute to SeaWorld because I, uh, with my co-host Andrea Compton, went down about a month and a half ago, and we spent about six hours at SeaWorld, and we talked and listened and learned and saw and swam with the dolphins and petted the penguins. And, I mean, you know, these people, these people, like you know, you you ask Gray Stafford or ask anybody at the Los Angeles Zoo or anybody who works at SeaWorld, I've got to tell you something, no one is buying a mansion on a trainer's salary. These people all over the world are doing it because they love animals, they want to preserve and conserve species, and they understand that, again, they are pretty much the last line of defense for so much for in terms of an animal's extin- extinction. So I I started uh, I started the radio show and I was, yeah we're 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 all over SeaWorld and we are having the best time and I really would love everybody to watch it. Camel works a little shaky and sometimes the sound goes out because we filmed it on my iPad. But you know what? It it's it's still fantastic. And and uh, who 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 which one of you lives close to uh, Litchfield Park? Nick, that's me. Nick, yeah. Nick, Nick, you know what? Go just write it down. Say Carol. Oh, yeah. Say go and and ask for Gray Stafford and says Carolyn says hello. <laughs> he will. Absolutely. He'll just he'll just he'll just he'll just break out and and uh, and he'll show you. Uh, you know he'll, he'll, he'll I'm sure he'll take you all over. He'll just probably give you a private private you know elephant elephant side tour of the park. Nice. And it's and trust me, it's worth it. It's worth it, and to see what they do, and and have him talk to you about positive reinforcement training and why you can train a, a dung beetle to an elephant, you know, and, oh, wow. and with, with 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 never a harsh word 
or fear or threat and get his book Zumility. Uh it's it's one of the best books ever. Even if you're not even if you're not an animal person or even if you've just gotten a puppy and or God forbid you should get a bunny this Easter. Nobody, please, nobody buy bunnies for Easter. Um but you know, if you just get a new puppy, buy his book and and oh you'll have the best, the most loving pets in the entire world. So So there you go. Yeah, animal magnetism. There you go. So we, we, now, yeah. what about the bunnies? Why, why about the bunnies? Because people people buy bunnies for Easter because they think they're so cute, and they don't right. understand that. You know what? The bunny's still going to be there in two weeks. Oh, it's not. Maybe it's not so. Oh, uh, now we actually have the responsibility of of feeding and taking care of and oh, picking up after this bunny. And oh, it was cute as a little present for you know little Mikey or Joey or you know Shirley for for Easter. Right. But that's what that's when. It's it's so it's so destructive. It's just so destructive. Don't gotcha. don't do not get people don't get an animal unless you're in it for the long haul. And if you yep. do, go to a rescue. Go yep. to a rescue. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. You know you know buy buy your kids some chocolate. Buy them some chocolate. Get them get them a big <laughs> Cadbury Easter egg. That's good. That's good. But Cadbury chocolate yes, bunnies no. There. <laughs> yeah. there you go. That's great advice. Yeah. <laughs> Carolyn, we, so we can go on and on and on because I have a well, bunch of Well, why don't we notes. do it again? Oh, yeah, we have to do it again. We definitely do. But one or actually two questions I'm going to ask before I sadly have to let you go. And wait, no, wait, is, wait, wait, wait. You're going you're gonna to ask? Where are you? Where, where are you? Are you in Boston? Where are you? You in Jersey? I'm in where <laughs> close Philly. Close Philly. You're in Philly. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all Boston, all Jersey. I forget, forgive me, Philly. But I but I heard do it. I, you know, I heard it. You, you know, I caught it. Okay. Go. I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna say, do I have an accent? Uh, just just uh, just just you you you're gonna ask me. You're gonna ask me. I love it. I love it. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. I'm picking it up. I got it. I got it. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, number one, in your bio it says, uh, if we ask nicely and treat you good, uh, you will recite the list of plays you appeared in, and then you're going to do it again backwards. So please, yes, let me hear see, that. No, no, I, oh, there's, there, there's, there's, the, there's the caveat of that is you have to ask nicely at the beginning of the interview because it would take the entire interview. And we just, we just don't have that much time. So you know what, that's, that's, that's good to know uh, for next time. Uh, okay. I'll, and, and, I'll, and I'll remember <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure we treated you nice first and you enjoyed us before I asked. <laughs> oh, my God. Here, wait a minute. I can pull up my resume, but you guys don't want it. It's like, oh, my God, it's over 100. It's over, like, close to 200 plays. Heaven <laughs> have mercy. Yeah. No. no. Uh, and, and the last thing, if I can just get you to cut an ID, you know, this is Carolyn Hennessy, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. You got it. Here we go. Ready? Yep. Hey everyone, this is Carolyn Hennessy, and you are listening to Totally Driven Radio. Wow! Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Some enthusiasm. I love it. That was awesome. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carolyn. This has been great. Oh, I can't wait to do it again. Let's uh, please anytime. You just you know what you 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 know how to contact me. You little me. I, I know how to contact you. <laughs> yeah, and someone hey. someone needs to get themselves get themselves to Litchfield Park. I mean, to to the zoo. And we got to throw out your like, uh, you know, your, are you into the social media thing or? Oh yeah! Oh, absolutely! Oh me! Oh me! Yeah. And social media! Oh yeah! I keep forgetting. <laughs> you see, these kids today—they'd start out with that. They'd that, that'd be the lead. I, I buried the lead. Um, yeah, www.carolynhennessy.com, and Carolyn Hennessy is spelled C-A-R-O-L-Y-N-H-E-N-N-E-S-Y, and then I'm on Facebook, Carolyn Hennessy, Twitter, Carolyn Hennessy. I think I have an Instagram page, Pinterest. I've got some stuff on Pinterest. So there you go. I'm all over the place. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. You're on Instagram? I'll, I'll have to start following you on Instagram, too, now. Yeah, yeah, do, 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 do. But 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 Pinterest is really cool. I got some I got some really cool stuff on. And then I, and then you know what? I post every day on Twitter, and uh, and I have so much fun with my with my with my Twitter page. So so there you go. And I Very and nice. I love them. And I have I, special 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 shout outs for my Twitter page. So cool. Thanks nice. guys. 
Thank you so much. This has been great. Thank you. My pleasure. Let's we'll do it again. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody, there she goes. The one, the only, Miss Carolyn Hennessy. She was freaking awesome, wasn't she? Very enthusiastic and very fun to talk to, absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah, I mean, I, dude, she's involved in so much stuff. Like, I, I could have kept going, but, you know, we have uh, we have the Todd Carey interview we have to play. The Todd Squad <laughs> is waiting. Like, they're going nuts on Twitter. They're lighting Twitter up. They just can't wait. They are overwhelmed with anticipation. And I don't want to keep Paula Bell waiting at 10 o'clock because, oh, she's calling back. Hold on. Yes? When I hear somebody going, wait, 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 <laughs> I, I figure I should call back. What happened? <laughs> oh, I don't know. What happened? Oh, I heard somebody going, wait, 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 wait. And then I and oh. but then but then I'd already hung up, and I thought, oh, I have to call them back because somebody needed to tell me something. Oh, uh, it's because I missed you already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you missed me already. Okay. All right. Uh, well, obviously, my, my, my night is packed, so I have to go because obviously I've got some. <laughs> All right, guys, well, now, now, this is this is the official goodbye. Okay. Uh, okay. See you later. <laughs> Bye. There she goes, making two appearances in one night. <laughs> now, should I do it? Should I go wait, wait, wait again? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Did you say wait, wait, wait? No, I, you know what? I think it was we were talking about something, and I don't think it was wait, but it sounded close to it. I'm going to have to listen to the playback. Oh, that's funny. That is so freaking funny. 